YouTube, so this is the video for the extension of the CT clamp. So currently on the top of the inverter, it's got these two plugs here. They're called GX12s, a two pin. They're labeled as an aviation plug. I don't know if it's because they look like aviation plugs or not. Pretty much it's a two pin prong, a two prong um, plug. Uh, it's used on this inverter, it's about the only inverter I've seen it used on, but maybe it's used on others. Uh, it's pretty much connected to the CT clamp just using the two wires. Um, so what we're going to do is create an extension for that. And if I flick you over here and put you on the stand. Very professional video work here. What I've got, and my in focus, I kind of am. Right, so what I've got is I've actually purchased a couple of a male and a male and a female of the GX12 uh, aviation plug. So that way um, I can just use the female and just plug the current sensor, the current CT sensor into this and use the, fem uh, the male end for the top of the inverter. Pretty much what I'm doing is just creating an extension cable. That way later down the track if I ever needed to test things or move the inverter or anything like that, I've still got the original cable with the original plug to plug straight into the inverter again. So that's going to work really nice. It pretty much just means all I'm doing is creating the, and just a normal extension with a male and, and a female end on the, end on the other. So uh, it's just a two prong. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to show up. Nice and easy. What I've decided to do is use some Cat5 cable. It's Cat5e. Um, I've used this a lot in the past. Uh, I do IT, so we use it all the time. Um, it's great for up to 100 meter runs uh, for network cable. Uh, it's also good for power over ethernet and all those other bits and pieces with normally about 48, 50 volts. Um, what I've done in the past with my cameras around the house, what I've done is I've used um, two uh, of the pairs, or one pair out of the cable and just ran uh, normal 12 volts through it using a normal 12 volt adapter and then obviously using the exact same colors on the other end, stuck a normal um, oh, whatever you call those um, plugs, um, have I got one lying around? Um, oh, I've actually got a short one. Yeah. Just a normal um, plug on the end, a DC plug, to plug straight into the, b the back of the camera because um, I've got p um, I've got power over Ethernet cameras, but um, I don't have a power over Ethernet switch. So I kind of did it the poor man's cheap way, um, just because why not? Uh, I had a 12 volt power adapter and I just ran p uh, power down the um, Cat5 cable and then using that I just connected one of these plugs at the end to those um, to those that pair and um, away we went. That does the job perfectly. Obviously the cameras don't need to run in a gigabit. Uh, 100 meg was abs is absolutely more uh, well, fine and absolutely more than it needs. So going on that principle, um, we had no voltage drop. It was pretty much 12 volts at the uh, 12 volts at the other end. So fantastic. Um, so in theory, this should be fine for extending the CT clamp um, about 25 meters to the house. So that's kind of going up the wall a bit, down, and then long term it'll be underground and then back up under the house. The house is about a meter off the ground so I come back under the house straight up to the switchboard and then there goes the CT clamp. So it's a bit of stuffing around. What we need to do is put a temporary solution in um, which means that pretty much running the Cat5 cable out the window uh, in the laundry uh, which is where the power box is. So the theory is what we're going to do tonight is to create a long cable um, and compare the readings on the long cable against the short um, CT clamp or the original CT clamp cable and just see if there's any variations in the uh, readings that we get because obviously you don't normally have a long CT clamp cable. Um, for this type of inverter it's normally they use an external unit to do it and then the external unit to the inverter link with, with their own kind of connection and then the short CT um, cable goes into the the other box that you normally have, the external kind of limiter box. So we're going to try and see how far we can get it. Um, we kind of need about 25 meters to be honest. Um, it's a very long CT cable so let's just see what happens. Uh, we can start off with I guess 30 meters and work our way down if it doesn't work but um, it hopefully will work and in which case um, having the inverter out in the garage and having the switchboard inside is going to be a, f uh, a functional thing that we can kind of get working because I'd hate to kind of move all the batteries inside. 
Um, so let's put this together. Um, so with the aviation co uh, connections and the um, the Cat5 cable, what I'll do is I won't bother you and bore you with all the soldering and bits and pieces. What I'll do is I'll connect it up and then we'll um, we'll see what happens. Cool. Right. So what we have is one hell of a long extension. Um, it's, I didn't count it out, it's dark, um, but it is quite long. Uh, I would say it's probably about 35, 40 meters maybe, uh, maybe a bit more. Uh, pretty much the length of the driveway and, and then into the garage. Um, but I thought I'd start off with something longer and then we can always shorten it, but it's easier to work with something longer. Um, so this one here, this end, the male end, uh, which will go into the inverter end, um, that turned out pretty well. Um, if it will stay on my hands so you can see it. Um, that one turned out pretty well. This one here hasn't got a back cap so well cap. So what I've done is I've just kind of dickery soldered it in there um, and I'll shrink wrap it later. Um, but if it works, if not, um, but at least it's way longer than I need and we'll see if it works. So let's plug it in. Right so back over to the inverter. What I'll do is I'll just fire up the DC, uh, first I'll turn it off, fire up the DC, turn on the AC and then um, we'll just give it a quick test before we plug it in and then we'll plug it in. So um, DC, that's oh, AC off, DC on, AC on, so 100 watt light bulb still. Um, so we're back to, should be about 70, 80. Um, or 100. Um, so it says 99.8, 100 watt load. I think from memory it dropped down a little bit last time. But that's good. So what we'll do now, um, so it says 102.6. So what we'll do now is we'll plug it, plug in now. I don't know what should we call it, the mega log extension. Um, it's probably best if I turn the inverter off before I do this. Make some theme music noise. Okay, so. So the female ends, male goes inside female, right. Now depending on, these things could go only one way, depending on which way I did the wires will depend on whether we actually now need to turn the CT clamp around, because um, I might have done it the opposite way. The cool thing about this is that they screw in and then they, um, they don't pull apart, which is quite good. Good design, even though if they are a bit fiddly to solder. Right, so I'll throw all that wire on the bottom. And we'll plug in our new extension. It should plug in somewhere. There's our bump, there's our bump. That's the top. Be nice if that didn't bend uh, under weight. But probably won't be there for very long. Um, okay, so let's turn it back on again. And let's see if what we get, it's either going to work or not, I guess. Because it's one hell of an extension cable. I was making a noise. And then 13. That's pretty damn good, that's a good start. Um, I might just zoom that in. Oops, where is the... Dudaki. So 113 watts, 100 watt load, slightly, very, very slightly above what it was before, you could say. Um, but that's okay. That, that cable in the end will be slightly. Um, it won't be as long as it is currently because um, it won't be needed but at least if we start off with something higher um, it means that I don't get halfway up a wall and realize that we're out of cable 
So that's quite good. I'll, I'll just try it with a lower wattage light bulb before this one gets too hot that I can't touch it. So we'll just unplug it first. Let's see if this drops back down to zero. So it's sitting at 10 watts. So it's not getting all the way down to zero. Um, I wonder what will happen if we take the CT clamp off the live cable gently and without touching it. So I've just unclicked it and now we're down to zero. So if I click that back in. Okay, so there's a bit of noise with the length of cable that we've got. Not much, 10 watts. So realistically, it ain't going to make much of a difference. Um, it potentially could be 10 watts over. Um, but that's pretty damn good. I'll just plug in the uh, smaller wattage light bulb. So we'll plug in the 15 watt light bulb. Yep, 15 watts. This is one of those energy saving light bulbs. So, right, and I'll plug that in now. Okay, so it's 15 watts. So, with the noise on the line when there's nothing around the CT clamp, we're getting 10. However, with the 10 watt, a 15 watt load on it, it's reading pretty much 15. Okay, what I'll do, I'll do have the um, the heat gun still plugged in. So let's plug, turn the heat gun on half uh, middle, well, number one. So 1300, which is roughly what it was before. I'd have to go back on the video and actually read what it was before. Okay, so now we'll see if we can still do full load, which is heat gun on full plus the uh, 15 watts, the light bulb. So looks like not getting much more than that, and 60. Okay, what I'll do is I'll just add more load to it. Uh, I'll just change out that light bulb by turning the power up first, of course. And putting in our 100 watt light bulb again, which will give us a bit more, we should get to 2000 watts with the, with the heat gun plugged in with the 100 watt light bulb. Because the heat gun says it's 2000 watts, but I don't know if it actually is. So, one, level one. Which is 100 watts more than it was before, with the 100 watt light bulb, obviously. And that's max, pretty much max the inverter. 1936. That's perfect. So that's with one hell of a long CT clamp. So I don't even, so I'll just zoom out again. Put me back around. So if you can make, technically, a CT cable that's, what, 35 meters long? Why on earth would you still need to buy the external um, unit? Um, they say, they suggest they still suggest using the external unit if your power switchboard is further away than your um, inverter is going to be, like too far for the cable to reach. Obviously, which is like one and a half meters or whatever that CT cable that comes with the unit is. So, with an extension, one hell of an extension, um, we're getting what 35 meters. It'd be good to, to uh, measure this out. Uh, I'll have to do that tomorrow when we've got some daylight. It's, it's at nine o'clock at night or something here and it's freezing cold it's winter so um, all in all that's very good so 112 watts 
with the 100 watt light bulb plugged in. If I just unplug that 100 watt light bulb, this should drop down to 10, which is our given with our noise. Um, 13.5, 10. So I could look at improving the noise level on the CT by potentially using more pairs of the um, CAT5 cable. Uh, rather than just using one pair, maybe using two or three or four pairs. But whether that will add to the noise or re reduce the noise um, would be interesting to know. The other thing would be, uh, or the, the current way I've done it is that the pairs I've used are the same colour, so like the brown and the white brown. I've used that pair. So whether I was to use the the yellow and the brown, rather than, so they're kind of a bit more separated. Um, realistically, it's still within the same cable, so it's probably not going to make much difference. Uh, I could potentially try the Cat 6 cable with the divider in the middle um, to help with cross talk. So that might make a slight difference. Um, but I suspect that maybe adding or uh, using a couple more pairs in that Cat 5 cable um, and connecting them in parallel, for example, um, might help. But given it's only reading 10 watts higher, if that, then um, it's not going to be an issue whatsoever. It's going, it's going to make no difference at the end of the day. Um, remembering that overnight the power is about 160 watts um, to 300 watts base load, somewhere around there as the fridges turn on and off. So whether it's 160 or 170 or whether it's a two, a 300 and, or 310, um, it's not going to make any difference realistically in the amount of uh, consumption because 10 watts over um, what 10 hours or something might only be 100 watts um, that's wasted so um, whether it's worth kind of trying to knit this out a little bit more but either way um, successful really good thumbs up for all the guys that helped um, try and solve this problem with the um, with the clamp and the position of the clamp um, so we've made some success um, this is so far working out pretty well now there's a couple of things that we need to to do